His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hosted a number of Ramadan Majlis leaders at an Iftar banquet at Rifa Palace. The engagement took place as part of His Royal Highness's commitment to interact and exchange greetings with the people of Bahrain during the holy month of Ramadan. His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's development progress in line with the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which serve as a source of motivation for citizens to continue to achieve and pursue success. His Royal Highness underscored the Silver Jubilee, recognising His Majesty's accession to the throne is an opportunity to reflect upon the successes achieved since the launch of the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness further noted that the Jubilee renews the commitment to continue development efforts and achieve the Kingdom's aspirations to generate further prosperity and a promising future for all. He exchanged blessings with the citizens on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan, expressing well wishes for continued progress and prosperity for the Kingdom and its people under the leadership of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of visits and gatherings in Bahraini society, which preserve the Kingdom's customs and traditions that have been passed down through generations. He expressed his pride in the Kingdom's close-knit society and its diversity, which are necessary to achieve the country's development goals under the vision of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness expressed pride in the strong bonds of respect, tolerance and social cohesion among Bahraini citizens, witnessed during the holy month of Ramadan. These qualities reflect Bahrain's tight-knit community, which the Kingdom continues to maintain and pass down through generations. He noted that security is a cornerstone of development and one of the pillars to fulfilling achievement and success. His Royal Highness commended the successful collaboration between the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, BCCI, and the commercial sector to ensure the stability of the prices and abundance of consumer goods during the holy month of Ramadan. He thanked the BCCI and the commercial sector for their efforts and commitment in this regard. His Royal Highness underscored Bahrain's firm stance towards the Palestinian cause and its unwavering commitment to reaching a peaceful, lasting and fair solution in support of Palestine's legitimate right to establish an independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. He affirmed that wars and conflicts have negative repercussions on all countries, emphasising that it is everyone's duty to safeguard development, stressing the Kingdom's unity under the leadership of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of the Kingdom's collaboration with the private sector, its role in driving the economy and its positive impact on citizens. He highlighted the importance of supporting the construction sector and its affiliated companies in order to enhance their continuity in investment and development. His Royal Highness expressed pride in the success stories achieved by the people of Bahrain through the Economic Recovery Plan and Bahrain Economic Vision 2030, noting that the ongoing process of monitoring and evaluating what has been achieved continues to be a priority. He expressed anticipation for Bahrain Economic Vision 2050, for which His Royal Highness is directed to begin consultations, with the aim of aligning it with the aspirations and ambitions of society, and to catalyse the Kingdom's ongoing development efforts. His Royal Highness emphasised that the achievements witnessed in recent years are the result of ongoing efforts across all members of Team Bahrain, including the Executive Authority, the Legislative Authority, the private sector and civil society, recognising all groups as indispensable partners in the pursuit of the Kingdom's success. For their part, the attendees expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness for his unwavering dedication to all members of society and for strengthening the social fabric of Bahrain, wishing the Kingdom further progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labour Fund Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, along with other senior officials, were also in attendance.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received Bahraini artist Khalid Abdullah Al Maharaki at Rifa Palace to present His Royal Highness with a painting. His Royal Highness affirmed Bahrain is proud of its citizens' accomplishments across various fields, commending the kingdom's artistic talents that have enriched its culture and contributed to supporting Bahrain's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness commended the contributions of Bahraini artists for their artistic and creative works, which have been featured in various local and regional art exhibitions, and reflect the distinguished level reached by the arts and culture sector in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness highlighted the history of art produced by Bahraini citizens, who are a source of pride for all, as the work embodies the cultural development that the Kingdom has witnessed throughout its history. Al Maharaki expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's continuous support to Bahraini artists, which motivates them to do more for the advancement and development of the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. In implementation on the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to set regulations to develop and protect the kingdom's fish wealth, as well as continue the process of fish farming to meet the needs of the local market, in addition to taking new steps to protect marine wealth, with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to preserve the kingdom's fisheries and enhance its food security, the personal representative of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 1 of 2024. The edict stipulates prohibiting the export of all types of fish, shrimp and other sea animals caught in the kingdom's territorial waters, except for crabs and jellyfish, whether fresh, chilled, frozen, salted, canned or smoked. The ban does not apply to fish farming products. His Highness also e issued Edict 2 of 2024, banning the fishing of spangled epera, sherry, rabbitfish, safi and sea bream and dak in the territorial waters of the Kingdom in April and May. This year's ban will be applied in May only. The edict also stipulates that fishermen whose fishing equipment catches these types of fish during the ban period must release them into the sea, taking into account their safety. In this regard, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah affirmed that His Majesty's directives reflect the royal interest in ensuring the Kingdom's food security by putting in place regulations to preserve the national natural resources increase fish stock and regulate the fishing industry. His Highness paid tribute to His Royal Highness for supporting efforts to preserve the Kingdom's marine wealth. He also commended the efforts of the Ministry of Interior to confront illegal fishing practices. His Highness indicated that the edicts which aim to enhance the Kingdom's fish stocks by restoring the environmental balance and rehabilitating the ecosystem will play an important role in increasing the quantity and types of fish offered in local markets. His Highness urged the community cooperation to strictly implement the edicts in a way that contributes to preserving fish wealth, noting that regulating fishing is a collective national responsibility, whose positive impact is reflected on the members of society. The Marine Wealth File receives great attention from His Majesty the King with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for its importance in ensuring food security in the Kingdom of Bahrain. More in this report. The Marine Wealth File is one of the files that receives special attention from His Majesty the King through various directives regarding ensuring the controls for fish wealth development and protection and continuing the fish farming process in a way that meets the requirements and needs of the local market. In implementation of these directives, the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, is keen through its initiatives and programs to do everything that will contribute to preserving marine wealth and enhancing food security in the Kingdom of Bahrain. In order to preserve marine wealth, the personal representative of His Majesty the King and Chairman of the Supreme Council for the Environment issued two decisions prohibiting the export of all types of fish and shrimp caught in the territorial waters of the Kingdom of Bahrain according to new controls and also prohibiting the fishing of some types of fish during certain periods in order to strengthening fish stocks, laying the basic foundations for preserving natural resources and regulating the fishing profession. These measures affirm that Bahrain is on the right track in implementing its national food security strategy, which focuses mainly on ensuring everyone's sustainable access to sufficient and safe food that meets their needs for an active 
and healthy life. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Abmasalem, received the first Deputy Chairman of the Shura Council and Head of the Parliamentary Division, participating in the Inter-Parliamentary Unions Assembly, Jamal Fakro, and the first Deputy Speaker of the Representatives Council and Head of the Delegation, Abdul Nabi Salman. During the meeting, the Speaker was briefed on the outcomes of the participation, the Declaration of Geneva and the bilateral meetings and Bahrain's most prominent achievements in all developmental fields and his firm stance in supporting the Palestinian cause and peace in the region. And Salam affirmed that the effective role of parliamentary diplomacy stems from the vision of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He hailed the positive outcomes of the participation in the IPU Assembly and over 30 of its meetings and workshops. The Speaker commended the keenness of the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, in enhancing and activating the Division's tasks and supporting the role of members and delegations participating in regional and international parliamentary conferences and meetings for the interest of the nation and its citizens. The Shura Council held its weekly session, presided over by its chairman, Ali Al Saleh. The session discussed the report of the Services Committee regarding Decree Bylaw 20 of 23 on adding a new item to Decree Bylaw 68 of 2006 on unemployment insurance. The session decided to approve the Decree Bylaw and referred it to the Speaker of the Representatives Council. Coinciding with the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's accession to the throne, the Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, accompanied by a number of ministers, visited the East Sitra housing project, where he attended the ceremony of delivering the first batch of residential units to citizens. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah affirmed that the housing achievements made during the past 25 years were a result of the royal vision that is based on providing suitable housing and decent living for Bahraini families which was translated into building new and comprehensive housing towns, as well as developing financial services and enhancing partnership programmes between the public and private sectors. He noted that the past 25 years witnessed a success story in fulfilling citizens' housing needs, following His Majesty's directives to provide 40,000 housing units in various governorates, build five housing towns and launch partnership programmes with the private sector. He hailed the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to prioritise the housing sector in the government programme of 2023 to 2026 as it constitutes one of the main components of achieving living stability for citizens. He launched the construction work of the second stage of units that include the building of 531 housing units. He directed them to increase the pace of work in constructing the unions to guarantee the fast distribution to citizens who hold eligibility certificates. Sheikh Khalid praised the efforts of the Team Bahrain in this regard, which resulted in the completion of constructing 1,077 housing units in the first stage. The Deputy Premier then inspected the town and its facilities and listened to a briefing on the ongoing construction work.
After that, the Deputy Prime Minister inspected one of the standard units. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah then handed over to the first batch of citizens the keys to their housing units, congratulating all the beneficiaries on this occasion. For her part, the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna al Mamehi, expressed her happiness with the visit of Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah and is la launching the second stage of units in addition to handing over the first batch of keys to citizens. She said that this coincides with the celebrations of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne, which confirms the support of His Majesty to the housing sector. She recalled the visit of His Royal Highness to inaugurate the town earlier in December, noting that the visit embodied the government's keenness to improve the quality of services provided to citizens and develop them in a sustainable way. The Minister indicated that the project is a model for integrated city that has all the elements for the quality of life, from housing units, green areas and advanced major and sub-road networks.
The Minister of Information, uh, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah al Nuaimi, announced the opening of the applications process to participate in the eighth session of the Prime Minister's Award for Journalism, uh, starting from April the 1st until April the 15th, 2024. The Minister affirmed that the award this year comes in conjunction with the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne, which affirms the status that the press and media have reached during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. He added that His Majesty's support provided the elements of development and prosperity to the field of media and enabled it to carry out its noble mission in supporting the comprehensive development process. He added that the award constitutes a qualitative addition to the process of journalistic work in the Kingdom since its launch in 2016 and reflects the care and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the press and journalists which constitutes an incentive for them to continue serving the country and its people. The Minister revealed that this edition of the award witnessed development and diversification in its fields and categories as six new awards were added, bringing a total of 10 journalistic awards, in addition to honouring the Journalist Personality of the Year, and including Digital Content and Journalism Student Projects category, as well as adding accompanying events on the sidelines of the award ceremony and forming a general secretariat for the award within the ministry. He stated that the award categories will include Best Opinion Column, Best Journalistic Investigation, Best Journalistic Dialogue, Best Press Photo, Best Specialised Page or Supplement, Best Visual Journalistic Content, in addition to the Best Infographic and Best Website for News Account for a Journalistic Institution and the Best Student Journalism Project for Universities. Adding that granting the Journalist Personality of the Year Award which will be given annually to a Bahraini journalist in recognition of their contributions to the field of journalism and their work which impacted national journalism. The Minister added that given the opportunity to journalism and media university students aims to support university media youth and encourage them to innovate and develop in this vital sector. The Prime Minister's Award for Journalism aims to celebrate journalists and honour their contributions, encouraging creativity and excellence in creating Bahraini journalistic content and enriching competition among media institutions to provide the best content. It also aims to encourage young media competencies and open the way for them, as well as diversify creative and interactive digital content on newspaper websites and institutions' accounts on social media. The chairman of the Sunni Waqf Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid Al Hajri, chaired the meeting of the administrative work team for mosque preparations and outdoor prayer areas in various governorates to receive Eid al Fitr prayer worshippers. Dr. Al Hajri briefed the attendees on the preparations and coordination with partners from official authorities to, com to accommodate the largest number of worshippers. A presentation was made on the main prayer areas in which Eid al Fitr prayers will be held as well as prayer areas for communities. Dr Al Hadri stated that all preparations were carried out in implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, noting the Sunni Waf Council's keenness to provide comfort for worshippers. <laughs> 